Hi, this is Deirdre Mulrooney. I'm outside Concern Universal Headquarters in Balaka, Malawi. It's December here, which of course means that it's a boiling hot summer. I'm here with a team of engineers from Trinity College, Dublin, who are implementing the pilot program of their latest invention, a thermoelectric generator, which attaches to cooking stoves to create electricity. Electricity is a rare commodity here in Malawi as only about 10% of the population have access to electricity through the grid. So come on inside and we'll have a look at what they're up to. We're at the Concern Universal Headquarters in Balaka. It's a very small town. Uh, we're here because we have to do a lot of work on these clay stoves. We have five clay stoves that are going out for a control group with no power generation and then we have five clay stoves that are going out with power generation to a different community. Before all the stoves have to go out, we have to burn in all of the stoves to make sure that there's no problems, to make sure all our equipment works correctly, to make sure that the stoves aren't going to break the first time someone fires them up. So the heat is collected on the inside of the stove and we use that heat to, for the hot side of our thermoelectric generator. But the thermoelectric generator works on the basis that you keep one side hot and one side very, very cold. So we need something to cool it. And obviously in Malawi, uh, where the average temperature since we've been here has probably been over 30 degrees, and um, cooling is a bit of an issue. We found out very quickly that some of our equipment was getting a bit too hot, so we had to make a quick dash down to the market to make a, a few adjustments to the stove. So these pieces of metal there are just to protect our, our circuitry and our logging equipment, and they do that very well. We tested our, our uh, logging equipment yesterday, and it's electronic, and it got too hot. Right. Uh, like maybe 80 degrees Celsius, and it's, it shouldn't go past maybe 65. So, um, and it needs to last three months in the field. So this morning, we um, yesterday I came to the market and bought some, uh, some, some tools, and we made a shield, a heat shield. And, uh, and now I'm here and I'm going to ask this man to make me 10, 10 heat shields. Fantastic. I guess he was the, owns these pieces that were made and right. I'm going to buy one. Ready made. Yeah. yeah. Mark was fun. <laughs> Going down to the market we had to, because of these heat shields, these little metal plates that we're using to protect our equipment from the heat. Um, we needed a way of fixing them, so we are just using nuts and bolts. But we didn't have enough with us, so we had to go down and find some in the, uh, in the market. Unfortunately, they're metric systems, so it was a bit of a, a task to find ones that fit exactly. Eventually we did, for a, a very generous price of about 3,000 kwacha for 80 volts. Um, and what we did, we got a load of wood, um, better wood than we had the last day. So this is what is generally ga gathered by the, the mm. locals and for the community. Mm. That, that's what they burn in the stove, mm. they burn anything. Mm. We've got a lot of that to burn and we're going to need probably more tomorrow. Some of the stuff we have at home that uh, might be concern is a bit too big to be able to burn properly. So we want the nice thin stuff, nice and dry. Great. Give us a good burn and we can test all the oh, stoves wow. in the next few days before we send them out. We're just burning in each one of the stoves just to make sure everything's working. Right. We Made things the wrong way and all of that. So, uh, just to make sure that there's a lot of thermocouples and things, so just to make sure we got them in the right order and all of this, they're all working and they're all reading. And so tomorrow now we'll get to go out into the field and give these to the stoves to the participants. Now the sea moves. Look at that for a fire. She That's how to light a fire. You know, this is um, a study uh, which is intended to provide an opportunity to uh, our communities to have um, access to electricity through using these stoves that they've been using for some time now. I'm Shumango Nyirongo. I stay in Balaka. Uh, I'm a Tumbuka by, by tribe. I'm from, my home bridge is Lumpi. After this study, what will happen is based on the results or the findings of this study, uh, there's a possibility of scaling up uh, this study to ensure that uh, 
communities are also able to access electricity. Would it make much of a difference to you to have some electricity? It is difficult for me to have electricity. Right. Because electricity costs much than this. Right. Yeah. So you, the bills would be too much. Yeah. I think this is beneficial and it will be able to alleviate some of the challenges our communities are facing. If you've no electricity, what do you do for light? We use candles. Candles? Yeah. Okay. Or and lamp. What, what kind of lamp? Color boy. There are a lot of community members who live very far from the schools that have solar. So this will, have, uh, will provide easy access to charging facility as well as having access to cleaner energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the stoves are ready to go, but there's no field so we can't bring them out. Oh so, no. So what's what's uh there's a couple of other things we can work on. Um we'll do a bit of data analysis, a few comparisons between the data we got from these stoves and the data from our own stoves in Ireland. And um, pretty much it's a it's a wait and see scenario. But it's a bit of a letdown after working so hard to get up ready. Yeah, I'm uh, being excited yeah. to get them out into the villages. Yeah. This is Africa. <laughs> this is Africa. <laughs> exactly. 90% of Malawians live without access to grid electricity, like one third of the world's population. But their energy problems are not limited to electricity, as we discovered to our detriment when the project was held up due to yet another fuel crisis. People regularly resort to bootleg fuel stations along neighboring countries, like this one in Mozambique. As life goes on in the village and goods get more scarce and expensive, people queue overnight in their cars on the rumor of petrol arriving in the country. When the fuel finally arrives, they stock up as who knows when there will be petrol in the pumps again. We can bring the tanks out to the field today, so... For who? We'll just bring them out here and then we'll load them up into a van. Get some padding so that we don't break them. It's finally happening, you have to run. It will be very good because it will boost the morale of the communities. Yeah. Since they will be charging their phones each yeah. and every day without spending money. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I think one thing which is very important is to ensure that after everything is completed, the study is completed, and we now want to roll out with the same two communities. What will be key is to ensure that we build enough capacity for local artisans to ensure that they are able to provide these services at that local level. I'm just wondering, what is your name? Okay, great. And um, how many people do you cook for every day? Six people. Seven. Right. Great. Five. Five people. Okay. So what what kind of things do you cook on that? Whatever steamer, boiling water for tea, rice. Whatever I want to, to cook, we can we can use this mbawa. Even a cake. Really? I can bake it at the mbawa. Really? Yeah. You can bake a cake on that? Yeah. Amazing. So, but mostly you have enzima, which is like made from corn flour? Yeah. And do you like cooking on it? Very much. Right. Right. This is the only way I can cook. Why, why not like it? Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm just wondering, what do you think of what you've seen today? She's very happy. 
very happy. She's very grateful because this has, what has happened, she did not expect it. She's extremely happy. Because in her life she has never expected that one time she will, she will use a house with electricity. And did you ever have electricity in your house before? No. She has never used Never. Electricity. And how did you light your house? She used a lamp. They use a can. So that first of all, her children will benefit a lot because they are studying and they will be using the light. Because you can compare, she's saying that you can compare if you're using candle light and uh, electricity from this. There's more power here as compared to, to the candle light. And again, she will not be spending money to buy a candle because she knows now she will have uh, free electricity in her house. The time has arrived for Seamus and Morris to wave bye-bye to their creations. One week later, they're back to see how their inventions are getting on in the village. We need to, we need to make, make a, a, some more information about that. So, if you use the stove three times a day, for an hour each time, that you should be able to charge even if it's just red. One, one, one person might to, to, to use uh, power from, from solar for the radio. And yesterday the radio was able to, you know, he was using it to the radio. Ah. They use this for the radio? Brilliant. She can actually imagine because there are so many people who are coming to, to ask for them and there's great demand whenever there will be that opportunity for selling. Many people will buy them. They've used the power for lights, radios and phones, so it's going really well this morning. Brilliant! So, on to the last stove and then off we get going out. Woo! Excellent! Commandant, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. Many people have liked the system and they think that we are selling it. And they are placing orders to say that if you are selling it. In March, Hazel, in March. 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 How's it going? Are you happy? Delighted. Delighted. Um, everybody seems to use the stove. They use it correctly. Everyone's got red lights. A couple of people got green lights. Everyone's charged phones and the Sun King LED lanterns from them. So it couldn't really have gone any better, I don't think, so far. So like I said earlier, we just, we just hope that the devices are robust enough to, to last the three months and we can come back and get some really, really good data then. Brilliant. So uh, all systems go. All systems go. I just want to say on camera thanks very much to Hazel and to Simeon this morning, especially yeah. they've, and to all the families that are participating. I mean, they yeah. don't have to take the stove. They don't have to use the stove. Yeah. But they're, they're willing to do it to help us out. So uh, uh -huh. just a big thanks to everyone involved. Yeah, they're brilliant. So would you say uh, so far mission accomplished? No, mission, mission's never accomplished on this, pro on this project. When we go back to Dublin, there's a lot of hard work to do. And, Redesigning how we remove the heat from the tag because we want to get rid of that fan. We may not be able to long term, but we want to we want to give it a shot anyway. So uh, the first part of the mission is accomplished, I guess. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. it's and it's looking good. promising. It's, it's looking great, but we still yeah. have to do all that number crunching. The engineers will be returning to Emponda Village in March 2012 to see how their pilot project went. And this thermoelectric adventure will roll on from there.